In November of 1983, the Demogorgon was banished from Hawkins, and during Christmas of that year, 12-year-old William Byers coughed up a strange slug that disappeared down the drain of his sink. The creatures of the Upside Down would not be finished with this small town quite yet. A new form of the Demogorgon, coined as the Demodog, has been growing its ranks in the shadows. Because the Demodogs operate using a hive mind, they're able to dig a series of tunnels underneath the town. Despite their mental connection, one of them manages to distance itself from the rest of the pack and even form a bond with one of the humans. To dive into the hive and see how the Demogorgon's pack really works and what made D'Artagnan an occasional exception, stick around to the end of this video. This video is sponsored by Scentbird. It's Halloween in 1984, and the kids of Hawkins, Indiana are not missing out on their trick-or-treating. But 13-year-old Dustin Henderson finds the most surprising treat of the night in his trash can foraging for food. After bringing the small, slimy creature inside, he believes he's discovered a species of polywog, a tadpole that he expects to grow into some kind of amphibian. I'll call this stage one of the creature's metamorphosis, and just for fun, I'll give it a nickname, the Demowog. Physically, it looks like a slimy frog with an extended tail. He tries feeding it a few pieces of his Three Musketeers bar and discovers that the creature doesn't like the heat lamp in the tortoise tank that he's keeping it in. It hides in the shade until Dustin turns the heat lamp off, at which point it goes to munch on the candy. Because it takes a liking to this chocolate bar, Dustin names it D'Artagnan, after the protagonist of the Three Musketeers novel, D'Artagnan, but mostly just refers to it as Dart for short. We don't know if Dart is male or female, or if it just doesn't have a gender like Mewtwo, but Dustin seems to think it's a dude. I got you, little guy. It's not yet known if this is a result of digesting the chocolate or part of its metamorphosis, but that evening, Dart has some kind of violent stomach ache that includes something moving around in its abdomen, if you can call it that, that causes it to screech out in pain. Dustin brings Dart to school the next day, Thursday, November 1st, in his homemade Ghostbusters trap, and convinces his friends to join him in the AV room to see his discovery. During class, Dart rumbles around in its case and makes noises reminiscent of a stomach growl. That afternoon, everyone takes a turn holding Dart. Oh, he's like a living booger! I say the same thing every time someone touches me in LA. They theorize that Dart is a polywog, but he only seems to resemble species from India and South America. Mike notices what looks to be something moving around inside of it and moves the light to get a better look. Dart doesn't appreciate the direct light and freaks out. The sound of the screech he makes causes Will to remember the upside down and the moment he spit out a potentially smaller version of Dart a year ago. Unlike the known species of polywog, which are cold-blooded, Dart doesn't like light or heat, so believing he discovered a new species, Dustin and the group decide to show their science teacher, Mr. Clark. However, after Will reveals to Mike that he believes Dart is from the Upside Down, they rush to stop Dustin before he gets Mr. Clark involved, since they made a pact with the Hawkins lab the previous year that they'd keep all the stuff about the Upside Down a secret. They quickly bring the container back to the AV room. Dart rages inside of the box, causing the whole thing to shake violently. Mike readies a heavy microphone in case it attacks, and Dustin releases the doors. Instead of attacking, it screeches while its skin ripples. A pair of hind legs burst from its sides with a spattering of slime. It would appear that the agonizing sounds it had been making had less to do with it being hungry and more to do with growing pains from the metamorphosis. The movement they had seen around its abdomen area was most likely the creature trying to kick out its hind legs and be able to move more effectively. We'll call this stage two the Demifrog. Dart runs out of the door and away from the danger it sensed in the room. Then Dustin tackles his friend Max for no reason. Lol. Dart ends up hiding in the back corner of a bathroom stall. Will finds it first, but Dart's screeching gives Will a little upside down PTSD. Once the door shuts, Dart moves behind the toilet until Dustin arrives doing his best Randall Boggs. It would appear that Dustin was right about the trust shared between himself and Dart, because when he finds him, Dart is willing to hop into Dustin's hands and ride under his hat. After being returned to the safety of Dustin's turtle tank, Dart goes to town on some more Three Musketeers before falling asleep for the night. Deciding Dart would be safer at home, Dustin leaves him in the turtle tank while he goes to school the next day. Now either Dustin didn't see gremlins or he forgot the rules about feeding strange creatures late at night, because he returns home to find the tank broken, with some kind of molted skin or membrane dripping in slime left inside. It's strange that Dustin doesn't seem to notice the immediate parallels between his own situation with Dart and what goes on with Gizmo, the titular gremlin of gremlins, late at night. Maybe he somehow missed gremlins being in theaters back in August because he went away to camp during the summer, or he let his joy over discovering a slimy new friend cloud his judgment. Dart grows into stage three, the Demahog. Not because it looks like a hog, but more because he's hogging up all the food, like Dustin's cat. Will and Mike had previously shared their worries about Dart being a creature from the Upside Down, and this is basically confirmed here when Dart's face opens up like the Demogorgon 
Morgan from a year ago, canine teeth included. And this is also confirmed by the VFX team of the show. The maturation rate of dark quickly shows how the demodogs can increase their numbers by using a molting process that may or may not be sped up by eating certain foods. Perhaps Dustin realizes that as he comes up with a plan to trap dart. Using a classic trail of bologna slices, he lures the creature outside and yeets him into the cellar. That could have gone so badly. What gives you the right? What's the difference between you and me? I'm not wearing hockey pants. What makes this interesting is that it's the first time we see a creature from the upside down outside during daylight hours. It's also a sunny day, which should deter Dart from leaving the safety of the indoors. Maybe it's a plot hole, or maybe there's something that makes Dart special in this stage three form. You have the esteemed privilege of being the first to see my next form. Locked in the cellar, Dart molts again. Stage four, as we know, is the Demodog. Demodogs? Demogorgon dogs. Demodogs. With a stronger set of claws that come with this new form, Dart manages to find a weak spot to dismantle a corner of the wall. Once it reaches the soil, it's able to dig an escape tunnel until it reaches the tunnel system all underneath Hawkins. These tunnels are used by the Demodogs to travel while staying both out of the sun and the public eye. The best example of how travel efficient these tunnels can be is showcased when Dustin and Steve Harrington are joined by Lucas and Max at the junkyard to help lure Dart out and take care of it. Dart appears after the night has settled in and a fog has rolled across the area. But Dart will not fall for the same trick twice. It doesn't move towards the pile of meat that they've set up. Steve believes that Dart wants a different kind of entree, one seasoned with Fabergé organics, and steps out of the reinforced bus to try to provoke Dart to go after him. Little does he know, Dart is simply a decoy, while the other demodogs surround Steve and the bus for an ambush. Well, well, well. How the turntables... Outnumbering Steve, the demodogs pounce towards their next meal. Stranger Things heroes have changed a lot over the years, but that doesn't change the fact that they started off as a bunch of basement dwelling Dungeons and Dragons fans. They don't really cover this in the show, but you know at some point, they had to address the smell. That's why I'm partnering with Scentbird as the sponsor of today's video. Scentbird is reimagining everything about the experience of buying fragrances. Whether you're just getting started with fragrances or building your collection, Scentbird acts as a place to express yourself and discover your style. Scentbird lets you choose a new designer fragrance every month for just $17. Every month, you get to pick what you want to receive, so there are no surprises. They have perfumes, colognes, and a lot of unisex options. With each fragrance, you'll get a 30-day supply, so you can try out the fragrances without committing to an expensive full-size bottle. But it goes beyond just sampling different scents. Try their online quiz to help you discover your olfactic identity. The scents I received this month were Sage Supreme, Bentley Silver Lake, and Commodity Book. I can see why there's a reason people love the new car smell. It's very energizing and has the aura of cleanliness. Don't let yourself smell like basement pizza. Make sure to use my coupon code CZ's World for 55% off at Scentbird.com. It's just over $7 for your first month. Available in the USA and Canada. Inches away from the razor-sharp claws of a ferocious pack of dogs... Demodogs. I'm sorry, what? I said, uh, demodogs. Like Demogorgon and dogs, like you put them together, it sounds pretty badass. Inches away from the razor sharp claws of a ferocious pack of demodogs, Steve makes a run for it. Demodogs pounce at him from all directions, and one of them ends up on the wrong end of Steve's best Ryan Sandberg impersonation. We're in the 80s, had to go for that 80s reference. Steve gets to safety, but one of the dogs jumps onto the roof of the bus and almost gets inside, but gets distracted by the call of another demodog, or possibly something greater. More on that later. It's possible that this demodog on top of the bus was Dart, based on the yellow spot seen on the tail, but it's hard to tell for sure. If that is Dart, maybe it took pity after seeing Dustin in the bus. It joins the rest of the hunting party and leaves to follow the call of another one of its kind. What we can learn about this species from this is that the demodogs hunt in packs like lions and the raptors in Jurassic Park. Once they have their target, they lunge forward teeth first. Like most of the life forms in the Upside Down, it would appear that the demodogs are almost like a remix of many creatures from our world. Dart may have been called away because of what was happening at the Hawkins lab, where a group of scientists trying to enter the Upside Down were massacred by the pack. One demodog appears from a hole in the floor and tries to bash the protective glass, but unlike Pennywise's face that one time, it fails to get through. So it lets out a wolf-like howl, inviting the others to join it. This signal is what lured Dart and his party away from the junkyard. As a group, they're able to make some progress on the glass barrier. The entire pack of demodogs invade the lab, sending Chief Hopper and a group of scientists running for their lives. As a pack, they're able to sync up their attack patterns. For example, three of them tackling at once is enough to rip down a steel door, allowing them to claim their prize and chow down on a group of scientists. Despite the fact that most of the demodogs' only exposure to the right side up has been limited to the underground tunnel network, they still seem to have no problem navigating the halls of the Hawkins lab. Earlier, I alluded to the demodogs sharing a hive mind. 
mind. The term hive mind comes from a hive of bumblebees. The queen bee emits specific hormones to help coordinate the female mm. workers and the mm. male drones. The hive mind allows information about where water or pollen is located to be shared with the entire hive to make them more efficient. The demodogs use a combination of sounds to alert each other, and their queen is a colossal creature known as the mind flayer. The mind flayer also has a special connection with Will, essentially making him a part of the hive mind. By using Will to recognize where his friends were located, the Mind Flayer sent a group of demodogs to hunt them down. So Mike has the idea to sedate him to prevent him from communicating with them. As a result of this, the demodogs actually have to search for their victims, giving them all time to move into the security room. With the entire lab taken over by demodogs, the group decides that they need to perform a system reboot to reactivate the door locks. They send a man named Bob Newby down to the breaker room. He arrives there and finds that every lab employee in there has already been ripped to shreds by the creatures. He is able to successfully restart the lab, but his friends find that he is now trapped by a demodog that moved into the west stairwell. This, in addition to the pack using a decoy against Steve Harrington earlier, speaks to the intelligence of these creatures. They're not just like bumblebee drones, essentially following orders and instinctually devouring prey. They seem to realize that the lights going on means that there's somebody back in the breaker room. Bob's able to divert this dog using a noise created by the sprinkler system and get away as the others quietly move to the exit. At this point, the pack splits up to more effectively search the grounds, which leads him to getting caught. He manages to outrun one, but its calls to the rest of the pack allow them to quickly swarm the door, break it down, and take Bob is their midnight snack. They probably would have been better off with the Three Musketeers bar, though. Chief Hopper tries to shoot them down, but they're also bulletproof. Luckily, they're too engrossed in their meal to care. Everyone regroups at the buyer's house, where they have their realization about the hive mind and determine that the best way to beat the army of demodogs is to destroy the shadow monster, which acts as the brain of the superorganism. They try to question Will in an ambiguous location, but the mind flayer is still able to find out where they are and send the demodogs their way. Just as the first one shows up, so does the completely overpowered psychokinetic girl, Eleven. She snaps its neck and tosses it through the buyer's window for some reason. That's actually kind of rude. I mean, I hope she pays for that. The group splits up for a plan to try to break the Mind Flayer's influence on Will by closing the gates to the Upside Down, where a massive horde of demodogs is now festering. Steve, Mike, Dustin, Max, and Lucas stay at the house. After putting the dead demodog in the buyer's freezer, for scientific purposes, so you're explaining this to Mrs. Byers, all right? They realize they can use the hive mind to their advantage by creating a distraction so that the dogs, demodog, so that the demodogs are drawn away from the lab, thus creating an easier path for Eleven to get to the gates of the Upside Down and destroy it, or at least close it. They plan to do this by starting a fire in the underground tunnels. Using Will's map, they locate the area where they think is the main hub, where all of the upside down tentacle things are and cover it with gasoline. Steve lights the area on fire, which causes a great deal of pain to those tentacles and as a result, every creature that is part of the hive mind. The demodogs at the gate all go crazy and the mind flayer prioritizes putting a stop to the fire, so they all clear out of the gate area. Steve and the kids run for the exits, but they come face to face with none other than Dart. Dart? With the hub now on fire, Dart's newest task was to take out any danger to the pack. By following the sounds of Dustin's group, Dart was the first to track them down and face the boy who betrayed him less than 36 hours ago. Let's just play it back one more time. They slowly approach each other, and the two share a moment where Dustin apologizes for knocking Dart into the cellar and offers a Three Musketeers to smooth things over and distract him long enough for everyone else to sneak by. There are a couple of notable things about this scene. The first is that the Mind Flayer doesn't seem to have as much control over Dart as it has over the others, and Dart is still able to make decisions on his own. The second is that it almost seems like Dart is wired differently than the others, having developed a greater taste for chocolate than it has for human flesh. Maybe Dart associates that taste with its youth, the same way that we always have a preference for mom's home cooking. In the end, D'Artagnan chose to eat the Three Musketeers rather than following the Mind Flayer's orders, and in that sense, he lived up to his namesake from the Three Musketeers novel. One of the central themes of the novel is this idea of all for one versus one for all, and D'Artagnan is forced to decide between being a King's Musketeer or part of his group of friends known as the Inseparables. In Stranger Things, loyalty to the hive mind represents the idea of one for all, but loyalty to his friend Dustin, who took him in and fed him early on, is an example of all for one. Despite Dustin's repeated insistence that a demodog is not a dog, their final meeting is reminiscent of the saying goodbye to a beloved pet trope. 
Demidog or not, Dart was a good pet and friend to Dustin. When Eleven closes the gate, the Mind Flayer is cut off from its host, and Dart falls with the rest of the Demidog army. With his army dead, the Mind Flayer is forced to retreat, but that doesn't mean he's defeated. But that's a story for another episode of Horror History. Hopefully this analysis helps add some context to the coordination of the Demidogs and their life cycle. And by the way, let me know who else you'd like to see covered here on Horror History, or what <laughs> franchise you'd like to see me cover. Check out that playlist on the left for more Stranger Boys, and remember to subscribe to CZ's World for new horrors every week. Ring the death bell for notifications, and I'll see you in the next one. Assuming we both survive.